Hey everyone, it's Rico here. Wanted to go ahead and take the time and make this video and show everyone what the carbon accumulation on the valves looks like on a 2017 EcoBoost Mustang with around 78,500 miles on it. Uh, surprisingly, there isn't a single video on YouTube that shows what the carbon accumulation on the EcoBoost Mustang looks like with, you know, especially some wear and tear. And yet there's a lot of people asking this question. So here I am to fulfill your curiosity and show you what the carbon accumulation is going to look like inside of these valves. Now, before we jump in there real quick, I want to go over all the mods real quick that I've got on this vehicle, just so you get a sense of when we peek in there and we look at the accumulation, you know kind of where less where it comes from. All right, so let's jump in real quick. So I've got a Mishimoto uh, catch can that I more or less installed since I've had around about 5,000 miles in the vehicle. There's upgraded charge pipes on the hot and the cold side. I've got upgraded coil packs for the spark plugs. I've got a uh, upgraded Turbo Smart um, blow-off valve. There is a upgraded wastegate actuator from Adam Tuned, a upgraded downpipe from Cobb, that mates to a MBRP exhaust, and the vehicle is tuned by Adam Tuned. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump into this guy, and let's peek and see what kind of carbon accumulation we've got. Okay, so here we go. Let's jump in. So here we are. I'm going to start peeking into cylinder one. And I'm going to try to get this uh, phone in here as, as best as possible so that you can see. So here we go. So let me kind of move this over a little bit. And I'm going to hit so we can focus. So here we go. This is valve one on cylinder one. And as you can see, you've got some carbon accumulation right there on the base and the stems. Let's go ahead and move to valve two on cylinder one. So this is valve two on cylinder one. Let me go ahead and click on here so we can get some sharpening. Here we go. So valve two on cylinder one. Now we're going to go over to valve one on cylinder two. There you go. Let's go ahead and click on here so we can get some sharpening. That's valve one on cylinder two. Now let's move over to valve two on cylinder two. There we go. So we can get it. There you go. Valve two on cylinder two. Let's move over to valve one on cylinder three. So here is valve one on cylinder three. And let's go to valve two on cylinder three, right there. Now for cylinder four, I'm gonna have to rotate the phone into portrait because to basically squeeze in here, it's, it's kind of tight. So hang tight, I'm gonna flip the phone over so you can see into cylinder four. Okay, so I've uh, gone and flipped the phone over. Let's go ahead and see if we can peek here into valve one of cylinder four. So there we go. Uh, let me see if I can get a better angle here. Here we go. Let me see if we can sharpen that up so we can take a look. There we go. So this is valve one of cylinder four. And now let's move over to valve two. There we go. So we can bring it up, sharpen it up. Here we go. So this is valve two on the cylinder four. Let me go ahead and switch the phone back to landscape mode because I know it looks so much better. So hang tight. All right, so I have gone through and flipped the phone back to landscape. And as you have seen, there is a good amount of carbon accumulation on those valves, which means it does need to be addressed and cleaned. What I plan to do is to do some walnut blasting. Uh, here's a picture of a before and after of utilizing this walnut blasting procedure. Take a look. And I'm hoping that I get the same kind of results that you see in here so we can get essentially this thing back to, you know, squeaky clean performance that's going to improve the performance of the vehicle. And with that, I hope that I have fulfilled those of you, your curiosities and your aspirations and answered finally your question on what these vehicle, what an EcoBoost Mustang looks like on the carbon deposits and the valves where it's got a good amount of wear and tear. So... I also want to reach out to Adam from Adam Tuned and give him a really thumbs up. I believe in giving credit to those who I've taken ideas from. He's got a great video where he's installing a UPR catch can that he sells, but he also goes through this process pretty much step by step on how to remove this um, intake manifold. So I want to let you know I am not a car person. Uh, I can tinker around with some of these mods and install them, but 
if there's any actual issues with these engines and everything like that, I wouldn't have the slightest clue how to troubleshoot them. I'd have to get on YouTube, lots of research, or reach out to a professional that can help me out with them. So I'm just letting you know that if I can actually go through this process, because I know it tends to look intimidating in many different ways, you can also do it too. So don't be afraid to, to dive in and do certain things, okay? Now, with that said, Thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. I hope you got something from it. And as always, drive safe, thumbs up, and have fun. Take care.